So here we have 10.3, finding the polynomial of a given degree with given zeros, complex zeros. So it says find a polynomial f of x of degree 4 with real coefficients and the following zeros. So we've got negative 3 with multiplicity 2 and negative i. Now in the last couple of, I think I've already mentioned a couple of previous topics, that the imaginaries come in pairs. Not only that, the pairs are conjugates, okay? So what that means is that if I have an imaginary zero, I automatically have its conjugant as well. And sometimes they'll give you the conjugants and that's great, but if they only give you one of the imaginaries and they don't give you the conjugant, you're gonna have to remember that the conjugate is also a value, it's also a zero. So not only do I have negative i, but I also have its conjugate, which is positive i. And I, because I'm doing degree four, I should have four um, factors, and I do. I have negative three twice, and then I have this guy, and then I have this guy. So that's four factors. So I'm gonna have x, and instead, because this is minus three, it's gonna be plus three in the factor with multiplicity of two. So there's two factors here. There's one and then another one, which is written as a square. And then for this one, I would have x and then the opposite sign, which is plus i. And then for this factor, I would have x opposite sign, which is minus i, okay? You always make sure that whatever the zeros are, your factors have opposite signs, okay? Now it does want the degree four with real coefficients, which means I do have to multiply this out. My biggest hint to you when you have to multiply them out is multiply your conjugates out first, um, and then you can multiply everything else, okay? It just makes it look a little bit easier to work out. Um, so when I do this, I'm gonna get x squared minus ix plus ix minus i squared. Now remember that i squared is a negative one. So you get x plus three squared, x squared, these guys will actually cancel, and a negative of negative one is actually plus one. And then before I can multiply these two out, I actually have to multiply the square out. So my hint was to do the imaginaries first, but then now I have to go left to right because these are all real numbers now. So I have to do x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And then let me clean that up a little bit before I multiply multiply in the x squared plus 1. So each th one of these three terms is going to get multiplied by both of these two terms. So the first is x to the fourth, and then x squared plus 6x cubed plus 6x plus 9x squared plus 9. And so if I combine my like terms, I get x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 10x squared plus 6x plus 9. And this is the polynomial with real coefficients that they're asking for. So just remember, whatever imaginary um, values they give you, you automatically have the conjugates. Now I just want to point out, what if? What if they gave me the zeros were um, 2, negative one half and um, three or negative three plus i, okay? What if they gave me those as the zeros? What would the factors look like, okay? This is gonna hit two things. One, it's gonna hit what a conjugate is when it has two terms, right? And then two, it's gonna hit, how does the factor look when I have fractions? Because I don't think we've had that yet happen in an example that I've done in a video, okay? What this looks like, you have to remember, this means that x equals two. And if you wanna get zero over here, you'd have the minus two on both sides, and so you get x minus two. So x minus two is the factor. 
here you would have x equal to negative one half and in order for me to get this equal to zero the first thing I would need to do is get rid of the fractions so I would multiply both sides by the common denominator which is 2 and so then I would get 2x equals negative 1 but I still need to get it equal to 0 so I would have to add 1 to both sides and then I would have it equal to 0 so the factor here would be 2x plus 1 so not only do you use the opposite sign but the denominator becomes the coefficient of x in the factor so you don't have to do all of this every single time. You just have to remember that yes, I need the opposite sign and I need the numerator, but the denominator will become the coefficient in the front, okay? So again, for example, if I have 1 7th as a zero, my factor is gonna be x, this is positive, so the opposite, my numerator, and then the denominator actually becomes the coefficient over here. So that if I were to set this equal to zero, I would get positive one seventh as my solution. Okay, that's how you can double check that you put it in there correctly. For this one, I know that x and then the opposite signs will be one factor, but then its conjugate needs to be the other factor. And how do you write the conjugate of this? The numbers need to stay the same, so negative 3 and i have to stay the same. The only thing that changes sign is the imaginary part. So the plus i will turn into negative i. But this is the 0. When I go to write in the factor, I have to change both of those signs. So it becomes x plus 3 plus i. And so then this is what you would have to multiply out. You would multiply these out first, and then multiply these two, and then multiply the two results together, okay? Kind of like we did here. Multiply the imaginary parts first, get that, and then multiply those two bubbles together, and get that, and then multiply the two results together, okay? So I just wanted you to be aware of what happens when your zero is a fraction, what does that look like in the factor, and then I also wanted you to know what to do when you had imaginaries that look like this and they weren't just I or negative I.